What's going on, everybody? Thanks for tuning in today. How's everybody doing? What's going on, Philip, Joyce, Trisha? What's happening? Got the green family going. All the names are green that I see right now. It's good to see that. Uh, anyway. Hopefully I'm live. Hopefully everything's working pretty well. Looks like we're working all right. Everything's going well. 16 viewers. All right, anyway. Uh, so today, I'm gonna be doing uh, some, some uh, facial features. Sorry folks, I'm just I'm trying to make sure everything's good, everything's cool. All right, there we go. Jacob, Amanda, Nadia, what's happening? What's going on everybody? So I got some pretty cool references here, a bunch of different, I got like 30 different photos open that I can reference. So I may jump around between some of these today, um, but I'll try to refer to them uh, if I change or whatever. But, you know, we're just gonna keep it pretty loose today, do some sketching. And uh, I also might refer to this little buddy I got here for facial features, you know, just kind of break some structure down. Might do this in the beginning just to see, you know, simplistically what these structures are. You know, when you look at the eye there, broken down pretty simply, just a few lines, and then here's a more complex version of the eye. So, pretty creepy, but uh, pretty cool too, you know. Simply breaks down the lips, I mean the lip, the way they broke down the lips here is like, it really simple because I think lips are really one of the most challenging things I think people struggle with, especially myself. And uh, just seeing it that way, I mean, really makes it simple. So, Enrique, Natasha, Matias, way to sell me what's happening. All right, so. Yeah, I might just go straight to the pin today and just really have some fun. I might do this brush pin as well. You know, get some thicker lines and stuff. Just so it might be easier to see. And uh, I don't know, just have some fun, mix it up, you know. So we'll just try to, um, I'll try to just start out. I'm not sure where to start. Um, I feel like starting with the lips, which is usually the most challenging thing, I think. Uh, and it's very hard to do with pen because you don't normally, when you draw, you don't normally like outline the lips, you know, it's, it's more of a, you know, there's not like a hard line around the lips. It's very soft. I mean, if you look at the reference photo I got here, let me try to zoom in more on this guy's lips. I mean, if you look at his skin around it compared to his lips, I mean, it's a super soft transition. You know, it's not like, it's not like there's a, a hard line around his lips, you know? So, that's, um, you know, it's gonna be difficult to kinda draw some lips, but you know, we'll keep it simple. We'll keep it simple, I think and talk about the main aspects, you know, if we break down this guy's lips, let me just try to simply break it down. I mean, this kind of shape. And he actually has pretty interesting, weird, weird kind of shape here for corners of his lips. Kind of goes up. And then, you know, I'm just getting warmed up, folks, so hopefully we'll get better here as it, as it goes on. But I'm just trying to simply break down. Like I said, you probably wouldn't normally outline it like this. If you're doing a drawing, it's mostly like shading. But he also has, like, the planes. If we look at how these planes are turning... You know. I'm 
just trying to take note of how these the form is kind of turning, you know? Um, and even how it's simply broken down on this mannequin I have, it's very similar to to this guy's lips. So there's kind of three sections here, and then there's one, two, th you know, like four there, interestingly. Um, and depending on where the light's from, you know, they're going to be shaded differently, but basically this part here is sticking out more and this these parts are kind of set back in so like on this mannequin I mean when it's broken down very simply it's literally broken down pretty much what I just drew and then you have something like this with looks like lines coming down here. So same kind of structure. And normally, normally lights coming from up above for the most part. So normally the uh, this top lip's going to be darker. So this is pretty cartoony looking stuff at the moment. So how do we go about, how would I go about realistically kind of drawing this, you know, I don't know. That's the thing about lips is, it's more of really the focus, at least where the value is, is really the separation. You know, I'm looking at this guy's lips now, the separation from the top lip and the bottom lip. That's really where the the interest is the contrast is the the what's really going to define the lips you know it's not really about outlining it completely and really you could just get rid of those outlines and if you just by adding these kinds of lines depending on where the shadows are you almost don't even need the outlines it's more about where the form is and, and shadows are. At least that's what I'm what I'm observing now. You know, I'm taking I'm trying to take note of figure out, you know, what makes the lips look like lips. And like I said, normally top lip is gonna be darker in value if you're shading it or painting it or whatever. But um Yeah, the uh, 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 Inktober, yeah, I kind of just do my own thing, man. I just do my own stuff. I, I do Inktober all year. That's why I've been doing it for months now. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'll be doing, I'll be doing ink in October. I'll be doing ink in November. I'll be doing ink in no December. I'm doing ink right now, you know. So lips, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to come back to the lips and, and actually let me look at some other references real quick. I wanna see if there's any different characteristics, you know. Yeah, I mean, even when you're painting lips, you know, it's like all it is is like a temperature change. You know, there's not much there's not much uh yeah, I'm seeing another pair of lips here. So I'll show you guys. So this reference, uh, if it updates, there we go. This has more of a smile. So you're getting more of the corners of the mouth engaged. Um, and you can really see what, what matters the most is like that, the, the line between the lips. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do this without out, out, outlining it first. And like I said, we're just sketching. We're just sketching today, pretty much. Practicing. So something like this, and then kind of curves down. And then there's. You know, this is really the main 
gesture of the lips, I guess. And very, very lightly, you know, it's almost like, yeah, let's just try, hmm. And her lips are very subtle, very soft, like the edges and everything. So it's almost like, it's almost like I just want to add, try, I'm just going to try adding value and see what it ends up looking like in the shape of a lip. We can even, let's see if we can fade that out into the skin around it. Like I said, folks, I'm just playing around here, trying different stuff. So maybe more of a broken outline is better rather than that thing I did above. Cause it kind of looks, ends up looking like it's hairy or something, but it's hard, you know, but actually when you look at it, I mean, it does, if this was a part of a face, I mean, you would, you would understand because of this, this separation line of separation. I mean, you would understand that it's what it is. You know, I think, I think it gets the, the idea across the, Hey, this is, pair of lips. Yeah, yeah, pretty interesting. Definitely interesting. And obviously these pen and ink techniques, it's a little different than graphite. You know, with graphite you could just fill that in, shade it in or whatever. Um, now we're just starting out with lips right now, but I'll probably move to nose and eyes and stuff. There's so many tutorials on like eyes and how to draw eyes, but I want to try to approach it a little bit differently, at least from some of the stuff I've seen before. I haven't watched, I don't watch many art videos at all. Very, very little, very few. But yeah, I really think, I really think the separation is what's more important. Like when you do outlines like this, it just makes it look cartoony and stuff. But when you, we focus on that, that the separation and whether it's open or closed or whatever it is, I mean, that's really going to give it, give it that. And then once you give the top lip a little more value, a little bit darker, depending on the lighting situation, obviously, you know, that top lip having that be darker, I mean, just makes sense. It just gives you the context for the bottom lip and everything around it, the light, the form, and usually towards the corners of the mouth might be a little bit darker, receiving less light. So pretty interesting, pretty different. Hmm. Let's see if we can find something different. If there's somebody has their mouth open or something, possibly. Um, don't know if I have any like that. Oh, we got some from the side. Let's do a different angle. Um, let me see. I'm trying to find one that's better, possibly. No, okay. Well, I got two choices, I think. So here's one choice, I'll show you guys. So here's one choice from the side, or we have the one above it. Um, he kind of has like a mustache and stuff, though. 
I mean, it's not too bad. We could do both. So let's start here, I guess. Let's try to see what these lips look like from the side. So obviously, you know, same kind of So I'm just going to start out basic shape first based on observation. Pretty straightforward and then, you know, we just have Top lips usually darker, depending on the lighting scenario, the person, whatever's happening. And my angle might be a little bit off, but yeah, this might be darker as well, darker towards the corners. But I can't, I can't actually see the top of his lip because he has mustache so it's kind of hard to tell what exactly is going on so the simple simple version I guess if we look at the mannequin I mean very basic very simple kind of angles almost the same kind of angle each way then you have the bottom lip that comes up to the point there. And this is, yeah, it's actually a little bit. Like this would be the top lip, bottom lip. Yeah, so most. I mean, the basic structure is just poop. Then you have the chin, goes up to the nose, the nose comes out like that. Chin like this. You start to see how simple it is to lips from the side, basically. Something like that. Very abstract kind of shapes, you know, with this mannequin. Very interesting. Let's do one more, one more from the side, I guess. Um, so we'll do this, this other one. I'll show you guys real quick. Real quick, we'll do this other one. It's kind of facing the other way. And I can actually see all of her lips for the most part. It's kind of in shadow and stuff, but now I gotta trick my brain to f flip it the other way. Let's zoom it in, zoom it in more. Just trying to start out with the simple gesture here. Her nose and then her chin. So the line between the lips, that's what I want to establish. Because that angle, that's what's going to, that's going to show you whether the person's just relaxing, whether they're smiling, frowning, the mouth is open, the line between the lips, that's that. That's the important thing, I think. Yeah, it's funny that I'm learning a lot myself just by doing this, you know, really observing and just trying to, you know, there's basic things I knew. I knew like the top lips always usually darker. Um, 
stuff like that, but I mean, there's just some obvious things that I didn't really realize, you know, like the, you know, this line of the mouth, I mean, it's pretty crucial, you know, it's really a crucial thing to really make it look more like lips. Not bad, not bad. Haven't drawn, <laughs> haven't drawn this kind of stuff like in so long, so not a bad start, I I would say. Especially just going straight with the pen, no erasing or anything. So yeah, she kind of does have like a little pout, you know, she's kind of. But uh, all right, let's um switch gears because what you know I'm 20 minutes in already so yeah I'll show the photo reference one more time so over there it is I mean a lot of these would be really cool to paint as portrait studies and stuff so I'm definitely get planning on doing that eventually um, yeah definitely gonna um, Oh, thanks, AEMI, by the way. I uh, appreciate that. Just trying to catch up on the chat here. Been focused on doing this. Um, so what should I do next? Do some noses or some eyes? Let's go to the eyes, because I feel like noses are pretty, pretty simple. You know, n eyes are a little more complicated, but let's break it down, right? Let's break it down. So let's do like a simplified version first, like kind of what I was showing you guys at the beginning on this mannequin. So if you guys look in the corner down here, you know, simplified eye, a little more complex. So let's, let's try to figure out how that works. So the eye is actually a sphere, you know. Um. So the, the uh, yeah, this whole page is just gonna be a bunch of nonsense. So this is actually the eye. Eyeball. In theory, anyway, I've never really seen one. To and then what happens is you have your eyelid or whatever, whatever they call it, kind of goes over it like this and then you have some stuff in the corners or whatever with uh, your eye, eyelid. Let's actually give it a lid there. Something like that and then your eye, you know, blah, 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 pupil, bloop. It's all scary and crazy looking. That's really what the eye is, but since we don't, you know, we don't see all this kind of stuff, actually. This is all hidden. But the point of me showing you this is like when you shade it, depending on where the light's coming from, normally the corners of the eyes will be darker because it's a sphere. So you have to shade it like it's a sphere, you know. You shade it that way. So these corners will be, you know, if light's coming from, you know, straight at you or up from above or whatever, you know, you might have some shadowing under the eyelid. But these corners are going to be dark too, and then the center will be light because it's being lit. It's just a ball being lit, but you're only seeing, you know, you're only seeing that partial part of it. So anyway, that's kind of a bad shape. It's not really the actual shape of an eyelid. I was just kind of given the idea. But... Um, kind of break it down it's pretty interesting how they break this this eye down so they kind of have it something like this shape I'll show you guys 
So I'm gonna, I'm gonna even try to simplify what they did. Something like this, and then this part goes down to there. Oh, you guys can't even see that. There we go. So this is kind of the shape of the eye that they have simplified, right? And then they have these, these kind of form lines to kind of give it a three-dimensional three-dimensional look. And some, depending on where the light's coming from, it's gonna be shaded differently, but that's what's gonna give it the form. This is shaded and then this will be even darker. So now you can start to see, okay, we got kind of a bit of form there. All right? Yep, that looks pretty good. Pretty close to what I'm seeing. So I'm just trying to give those lines a bit of form, but that's really the simplified version of the eye. But you can see it's not, it's not like, a, it's not what I drew earlier. It's not like a, it's not just like a simple shape like that. Sometimes it can be, but normally you want to give it a little more accentuation, the bottom, and then the, it's more like something like this maybe. But normally, I think, well, on this version, they have it straight across, but you know, sometimes the eyes can be angled differently. So the corners of the eyes will be, you know, these points where the corners are, they could be angled certain ways, depending on, you know, just the person's facial structure, facial shape. So anyway, let's, let's study from, uh, let's look at some references here. Let's go back to that first one I did. Cause that was lit pretty well. lit pretty well and you kind of you know we can get the idea here and this is a lot smoother you can see the curves here but you can I mean if you broke this down into straight lines I mean you can see how it simplified you can make it so I'm gonna do his the eye to the left for us the left side right <laughs> not left side right uh, So his eye, actually, if you look at it, the corners, his outside corner is lower than the inside corner. So his eye, if I broke it down into straight lines, it's something like, it's almost something like this. That's really kind of the shape of his eye, actually. And the eyes kind of, let's see, sitting there like, but that's really the interesting shape of his eye. If we broke it down, you know, really simplified it. And the top lid is a bit darker due to Eyelashes coming straight at us and light. And the corners of the eyes. A bit darker, like I said. Eyelid. Now, not super realistic. It's not really what I was going for. I'm going for a simplified version, you know, and I broke it down to straight lines, but you know, there's just crucial things that I'm, that I'm learning, you know, watching out for these corners of the eye and what, what kind of angle does that create? You know, is it a straight, is it horizontal completely? Is it slightly slanted? Um, you know, paying attention to other things around the eye to give the eye 
more context, you know. Pretty crazy looking, but but I mean, not bad for you know what three or four minutes of just drawing something real quick. So let's see if there's something another interesting kind of eye that's different. do from the eye from the side again so also yeah let's let's do this eye on the mannequin actually before I do one more so So the way this mannequin kind of breaks it down, at least from the angle that I'm viewing it, which is not exactly eye level, but pretty close. But I like the way that it breaks down the eyelids. And I had a lot of fun yesterday painting this stuff too because you get the really get the idea of three dimensionality when you study these planes. So that's like a really crazy bottom eyelid, but when you look at it on the mannequin, I'm like, oh, it makes sense. Like it works. <clears throat> Peaches are cool. I like peaches. Yeah, peaches are in season now. I haven't come across any. I mean, I've seen them in the store, but I haven't got, I haven't really looked at them. It's usually too expensive, and then they don't end up being ripe anywhere. Ripe enough the way I want them. And then this top eyelid, they break it down like that. I mean that's that looks like looks like an eye. It's pretty cool. And you get the idea with this curved line here at the bottom that it's a spherical thing, but you could still push it a little bit with some shading. It's all dark over here. There we go. We've kind of the simplified structure of the eye. And that's pretty much what I drew over here. You know, this is a little more cartoony looking because it's just, you know, I don't have some of the forms there. It's not completely all shaded in and but you can see the similar forms here, you know, this bottom eyelid with the rounded eyelid there, this top eyelid part with the different sections there. This one just doesn't look as round because I didn't really, didn't really shade it 
to look round. These lines could be be a little bit darker and thicker because yeah, cool, 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 cool. All right, let's do like an eye from the side. Let's see what. See what happens when we look at this thing from the side. Okay, three fourths for you. Good, good point, good point. Let's do a three fourths view. Didn't really think about that, but very true. So this is like 45 degree angle. I'm just gonna draw what's on the mannequin first. I don't know if I have any photos that are three, four, so I'll try to see, should, I should. But here again, we still get the, the roundness, roundness of the eye coming in and that seems seems to be pretty critical kind of got the angle here wrong a bit but it's all right there's the corner of the eye sticking out like that and So same planes I was drawing earlier, just different angles, obviously. And this is from the outside, looking, you know, looking in, looking towards the eye from the side. And the nose would be over here. Oh, let me scoot that up, sorry folks. So this would all be kind of shadow in here. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Plane of the nose coming in. Hmm. Plane of the. Let's see. You have the eyebrows up here. Coming down. So that's kind of the whole whole eye structure there. Yeah, this is kind of all one darker value. Nice. Yeah, it's cool to have these references, man. It's really cool to have these these references and to be able to practice this kind of stuff. It's definitely useful. Definitely useful. Even if I, if I 
wanted to, I could add some, possibly add some light on this thing. Yeah, why not? I don't know. I'm just getting bored of the black pen. I want a little hint, a little hint of some light. That's all I'm going to get anyway with this crappy jelly roll pen. Yeah, I think all the stuff I drew would probably come to life if I put some highlights on it, you know. Which, you know, maybe it's, maybe that'd be cool to do. Put some highlights on some of this stuff. Just give it a little more, a little more form. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's kind of cool. Oh. Yeah, the lip, the lips are, uh, you know, looking at the lips compared to the eyes, I mean, the lips seem very, very basic. The eye, the eye is much more complex. It's very similar to the lips, actually. You know, having that, it's just like an open, really, it's, I mean, if you look at it, I mean, this looks like a pair of lips here with like an open mouth. So, I mean, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. How would the shape of the other eye be affected by perspective or even the pupil? Well, that's a good point. I don't know because on this mannequin, the... Uh, the eyes are different. They have two different eyes. So unfortunately, I can't really look at it. Can't even really see the other eye. From this view, the nose kind of blocks it. Um. Well, I didn't do an eye from the side, but we'll just do that real quick. Uh, but I feel like I should get into noses and stuff. Once again, that curve of the spherical shape of the eye being eaten by the eyelids. Yeah, I mean, that's angle's probably off here a bit kind of hard to tell. That's why drawing from life is so important because you really try to figure out these, I think I had the angle right actually, you really try to figure out these angles and if you just move your head a little bit, you know, it changes the whole thing and, you know, you really learn to try to portray stuff the best you can. And the 
form of the the eyebrows here. So the eyebrows would be like up here somewhere like this and just wrap around a little bit there. So it's like starting to be the side of the head almost. And it goes down to the cheek and everything. It's like the the nose starts like here. Yeah. And the nostril down here somewhere. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I think you guys get the idea. And you can start drawing the head up from here. But yeah, I definitely recommend like studying this kind of stuff. It's definitely pretty cool. Pretty cool. And just sketching like this is just helpful. You know, just loosening up and... I feel like, I, I feel like if you just did like a, a ton of these kinds of eyes and stuff, I think when you go to draw a portrait, I mean, I feel like uh, you'd have it in your head, kind of how an eye is, is structured for the most part. And I think that's the whole kind of importance for all this is like, just reinforces everything, you know? I'm just trying to just give in context to those values and everything, you know? different planes. So there you go. Two pins in 10 minutes, a little bit of tan paper, pretty cool. Yeah, some of, some of it's the angular skull, some of it's from humans photos I've been using. But uh, let's do a nose now, let's get into noses. I got a reference from the side here, I'm going to draw this one. Start off from the side. Just see what's going on. Side structure first. So, pretty straightforward. Big kind of triangular with a curve on the front. Triangular shape. And the mouth comes down. Pay attention to where the the nostril, the back of the nostril is actually. So the back, this is interesting. So I didn't even realize this, but the back of the nostril is actually behind this point. So it's way back here. I was about to draw it right here, be a small nose, and then I'd have to fix the line up here. So really, back of the nostril is like that. The curve of the nostril, that structure. So. Like I said the other day, like when I was drawing the very first portraits, it's always referencing one point to something else you already put down. You know, I kind of had to just go with it, even though this angle is probably a little bit steep, could have been less steep possibly, you know, but it's always just like, you're always referencing to something, whatever you put down first. And this probably could have been bigger. Something like that, and the, the nostril, now I'm referencing the nostril compared to what I have down. And 
and this is all pretty solid shaded, shaded solidly back here. Looks like it's being lit from the front. And there's a plane under here. It's a little bit darker. Actually, this is probably up too high, maybe. Maybe not. Just a little bit. You know, not much shading or form there. Not much shadowing going on. But this part is really dark, actually. We'll just make it super dark. Something like that, but I mean the basic, form, like looking at this mannequin to break it down, it's very, very basic the way the man it's broken down on the mannequin, pretty much straight, and then kind of goes straight up a bit. Obviously the mannequin's very generalized, so you know some angles in, in humans, you know they're gonna have a steeper angle here for some people might be more straight up and down for some people or less you know the noses are going to be at different angles but for this general mannequin that's pretty much the nose and the mouth comes down and then the nostril jumps off the nose there and goes back connects to the face back here so once again, we see that the, the nostril connects, well, if you view it from the side, the nostril where it connects lines up pretty much where the, uh, the top of the nose meets the, the forehead. So that's definitely interesting to take note of. All right. yeah, nostril swoops around. So basically this little structure here that we're seeing, and there's another plane here. But if I were to shade these, just to give it a little more form, a little more context to, to what's happening, there's a bunch of little, but the other side's more simplified. You know, the other side's way more simplified, actually. But this will still get the idea. And there's a plane here that's slightly shaded above. It goes all the way down. That's the line that connects down to the lips. And the interesting thing about portraits that I didn't really touch on. I mean, there's so much with portraits. It's like this would take me like three or four weeks to like of live streams to just cover every little thing because it's just like there's so much stuff. The eyes, most people think like, if you were to draw the eye, most people like draw the eye right here, you know, like, oh yeah, it's near the edge of the face. But it's really not. The eye is, is let's see, so we have the form going up like this. The eye is set way, so basically this eye I drew down here, if we were to copy and paste that up here, I mean, it's way, at least from my angle, it's way back here. You know, the bottom of the eye, up from this line, it's like the bottom eyelid, curve of the eye. So the eye is, is far, much more inset in the face than you, than you think. And I've known that for a while, you know, I've done some paintings from the side and drawings and stuff like this, but it's something that's easy to forget, you know, if you're drawing something off the top of your head, you don't have a reference, you know, people would mess that up, you know, they'll draw the eye way up here, it's like, you know, that's not where it's supposed to be. You know, it could be up higher, it depends on the eye level, you know, if I were to just lower myself, the eye will move up. If you're going way above it, the eye moves down. So the horizontal aspect of it can change, but really, and also, you know, of course, the you know, the vertical aspect, 
angle of it can change depending on how turned the head is. But if you're looking directly profile, I mean, the, the eye is, is really far set into the head. So now you can, once you start practicing, you know, studying all these different components, it becomes a lot easier to connect them all together, you know. Um, okay, here we got a, we got a question. Um, Uh, uh, with the references, with the reference you did, can you show the orthogonal lines your brain puts in? Um, so you just mean like, like what I was doing here, like to get to the eye, basically, like from the nose, like stuff to line it up. Is that what you're talking about? Like orthogonal lines, like basically like this, if you see this line here, you know, just try to line up what goes to it. Um, and that's one thing to actually take note of as well with noses is like, you know, this usually, uh, uh, you know, it, it depends on this man. This mannequin is actually a little different than the photo reference. So if you look at the photo reference I used, it's a little bit different than the mannequin. And I'll, I'll explain why uh, real quick. So looking at the reference photo, his nose is kind of like this. Um, you know, very, very brief, very quickly. It's not really that important, the shape. I mean, the shape's important, but I don't have to get perfect. What I'm trying to show is, is the, the relationships between all of these features. So let's say that's the guy's nose from the reference that I just drew or showed you guys. And his eye is actually starts right about here, it looks like just with the angle of, the, of this photo that was taken. It looks like it's from the profile, looks directly from the side. Could be a little bit different. Not 100% sure, but from what I can see, kind of looks like that. So there's this guy's eye, eyelid structure. And then the eyebrow comes way up here. Something like that. Um, huh. Yeah, drawing from memory, you really got to practice drawing from memory. You know, I, I started doing that years ago. I haven't done it much, but there were times when I would try to like paint from memory, draw from memory. Anyway, what I was trying to show with this portrait, so. If you look at this line of his nose and then this line of his, his nostril, if you draw it to the bottom of his eye, you can see like they're not parallel. You know, these this line here and this line here are not parallel. So they're creating this kind of interesting shape. So if I go back to the reference, you guys can kind of see that. So if you take the point of his nostril to his eye, it gets thinner and thinner, smaller and smaller. Um, and maybe that's the case with most humans. I mean, it depends on... But looking at this mannequin that I drew, that I'm drawing, it's a little bit different. And that's why this mannequin is just a generalized, you know, it's really to just help you think about these planes and to, to imagine things. And like I said earlier, I mean, even the, the forehead, they have the forehead going straight up and then it goes back into the forehead. But a human, you know, really comes out a little bit more. You have that more like a brow bone, but anyway, this eye, if I'm looking at it, let's see, straight from the side, eye level. You know, the eye really comes back here. And the bottom of the eye, if we draw the whole, uh, draw the whole nose in here. The bottom of their eye, it's actually, it's really parallel. Looking at it now, uh, so what that means is the eyelid really connects like right there. So it's not saying that the mannequin's wrong, but the important thing, it's like these simple things is what 
I try to look for these simple angles and things to line up. And I guess that goes back to Lee's question about the orthogonal lines. You know, that's the kind of stuff I kind of look, try to look for is like, okay, how, where does the eye up here line up? Like what kind of angle do I need to draw from the eyebrows to get down to the eyes, you know, this way? And then up from the nose up here and then even down to the corner of the mouth, maybe the corner of the mouth's there. But then maybe on the reference photo, the corner of the mouth, yeah, it's pretty similar, actually. Corner of the mouth is down here, lines up at that bottom with that uh, nostril. So that's something that's actually in common with the mannequin here. But people are going to have these different kinds of features. You know, some people may, their nose may dip lower and have it come out like that. So once again, we're seeing a different, different kinds of angles there. So it's these structures, you know, and somebody's forehead might go back like this. Some people's might just go straight up and then curve back flat. Um, everybody's completely different. So it's, it's, it's these, these angles that I think that's why straight lines are so important for drawing and why this mannequin is, 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 is so helpful because if you try to just draw everything with curves, like, oh, okay, we're going to draw some lips and everything will be so curvy. I mean, it's hard to know, is that curve correct or not? The only really way to test it is to draw, you know, straight lines for the most part. That's one way to test it. Um, so if you just start with straight lines to begin with, it's really easy to just be like, okay, I'll adjust. You can adjust the angles a little bit. Maybe it needs to be more like this. Maybe it needs to be more like this. You know, you start adjusting uh, angles of things. Okay, this needs to be more out like this actually um, you know it's just easier and then later on when you get further into the drawing usually the curves will just happen by themselves you know like like if, if I'm trying to draw something really curvy like this you know it's easier if I just break it down to begin with and just something like this and then all you have to do see if I was trying to draw so I could do, if I'm trying to draw a curve like this, I could just break it down, really simplify it into some lines. The only thing you have to do is just cut off the corners with other straight lines, and you automatically will get curves going. So obviously this will be with pencil. You'll be doing this with pencil, not pen, of course. Um, what's going on? SR15, blah, 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 blah. What's going on? What's happening? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, but doing this in pencil, I'll do that real quick. You guys probably won't be able to see it, but that's the, that's the point, you know, starting out with these straight lines in pencil, it's so light that by the time you get to the end of your drawing, all these curves will be solidified a bit more. And then you just erase kind of the other, other junk you put down, but at least then you'll know you'll have the curve a little more accurate than if you just went in and tried to like, oh, okay, I'll just draw the curve, you know, like, who knows if it's right, you know, there's no way to tell. So, yeah, this is, this is really interesting, uh, really interesting studies, but I didn't do the nose from straight on. And I think that's really an important, important one to do. Um, <laughs> QS8 me, QS8. Am I? Okay, that's weird. Interesting. All right, it's Kuwait Asami, man. Kuwait Asami. He's the homie. <laughs> uh, all right, so nose from, we'll do a simplified version first from what I'm looking at, just so we get an idea of the structure. So this is kind of the bridge of the nose at the top. or uh, you know where it meets the eye. We'll draw the plane lines here, I guess, a little bit. And the nose going down. So this is all one plane, one plane. And then the nose starts to turn underneath and you guys can't see that and I can't even show you, there we go. The nose starts to turn underneath right here. So this plane, it actually gets a little darker. 
And then you have the nostrils coming off. The, the interesting thing is each side of the nose on this mannequin is different, the one I have. And I can show you guys that in a minute if you want to see. So one side's much more simplified, which I just kind of butchered. So this side's completely just simplified. They simplified the whole nostril, wing of the nostril. And then it, they have it just coming up like this. You know, there's some complicated forms here. But the other side, kind of elaborated a little bit more. Make sure we get these plain lines distinct so we can keep track. So, yeah, they definitely elaborated a lot more on the other side. More subtle kind of planes for the nostril. So, start to see a little hard to see but the nostril kind of curving under sort of a turning form there and then they have you know lines coming off the nose here going up to the eye and the eye is kind of inset over here somewhere blah 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 um, yeah so that's pretty interesting there's actually more planes underneath here it's just turns under so much you can't even see what's going on there. But these side planes also would be a little darker. So let's try to translate that. Let's try to let's get a straight on nose here. Let's go back to that same guy we've been using the whole time, I guess. He's lit up pretty nicely. Show you guys one more time. Yeah, I mean, draw, usually drawing a portrait flat on like that, I mean, it's not usually anything people do. But, you know, it's it's a good, it's cool to understand, kind of understand. You know, there's other ways to break down the nose as well. I mean, you could say that this kind of part is spherical. And you have these nostril wings coming off of that. But, you know, I, I like the straight line method personally. Uh... But looking at this guy's nose, I mean, the whole bridge of his nose is very subtle, so there's not even really any any lines there. It's kind of, but the part that's that really sticks out is the uh, <laughs> the part that sticks out. His whole nose sticks out from his face. But you can really see the wing of the nostrils in this in this one. And really there's a plane here is where it starts to curve down. And there's a plane coming. So this is that spherical form I was just kind of talking about. And it's very similar to what we had drawn here. This flat. You know, this is where it starts to turn underneath. So it starts to get darker right here. There's actually shadowing on this side.
side's all in shadow, all the way up his nose, up the side of his nose. And this side, I mean, there's, it's very subtle planes, you can't even really see any difference where the planes are. That's why noses are pretty difficult too to draw because you really have to just focus on the, usually on the bottom part, depending on the lighting, you know, obviously the lighting's in a, lighting's everything, man, the lighting changes everything. But there you go. And this is partially shaded just to give it, if you want it to fade a little bit more. But yeah, this has been fun just kind of studying these different forms and everything. We could do like a three quarters of the nose because I didn't really do that. Um, as soon as I find a. Uh, Yeah, I don't I don't know if the page is going to look really good when I'm finished actually. <laughs> it's pretty, you know, there's kind of there's there's areas that are cool looking, but you know, I don't really know what to make the thumbnail for this uh live stream because there's not really a whole lot of good stuff on here. The eyes are pretty good. I think I need to put some more white pen down and play around with that, but So, 3 quarters nose. And if we do those subtle kind of whole bridge of the nose to f pointed part, have it come down. So we can't even see the other side of the nostril, like the other nostril. This is the front of the nose, the front flat part. So this is like kind of where that curve would be. And this is where the nose attaches the bridge or uh, what is it called? That thing, septum, hooks to the face. And then the wing of the nostril there swooping down. Some other very light planes just to show. Planes around it and this is the line that goes down to the mouth. This is all shaded. This is partially shaded. Oh, there we go. We have a nose on the side of the face over here, like this. And the other eye is over here, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah, pretty interesting. We can have a shadow under the nose. Yeah, I mean, I've only, I haven't even really scratched the surface for faces and stuff, you know? This is like, this is all super basic stuff. There's so much more, like, I think this was really the best part that I talked about where I really was connecting everything. Because these individual elements are important to like, you know, figure out the structure and how everything works, but really it's like putting it all together is like the challenging part. But I, I do believe like once you draw these individual elements enough, all you got to do is start studying the transitions between them. It's almost like creating a piece of music, you know what I mean? Like you had to, you have to uh, like, uh, what do you call it? You know, when you're doing a piece of music, like you get it, you figure out, you can break it down to like however many parts, you know, let's say like three parts. You break one down part down, the first part, you learn that. 
and then you start transitioning that first part into the second part and then you figure out the second part you know it's kind of like how you have to do this with features you know you gotta figure out how to draw some eyes the structure figure out how to draw some nose the structures and then you figure out the placement you know of everything how do these all fit together how does it how do they what's the transition between them what are you know certain lines from certain angles you know I, I think if you learn if you learn three different angles for the most part you know like profile straight on and then three quarters I mean you might be able to finesse you might be able to figure out other kind of subtle angles and this is obviously I didn't even study like see there, there's more I need to <laughs> I need to do more of these studies for real in the future because like I studied everything from eye level. I didn't even study like what if the what if the head's looking down? You know, I didn't even study like looking up, looking down, looking, you know, down like this to the side, like here I'll put on my webcam. Like I, I only studied everything from this view and this view, this view. I didn't even study like looking down at it or up at it. So there's there's a lot more to 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 study for sure, and maybe that's it's more important to study all those elements together and how they interact. It's like if you're looking down at someone or up at someone or up at an angle, down at an angle. Because all these things have perspective. Everything is linked together, you know. Always more studying, man. Always more studying to do, that's for sure. We def I definitely got more studying to do. But if anybody has any last minute questions or whatever, um, let me know. So is the Uniball working better than the Jelly Roll? For the most part, yeah, I mean, it's definitely brighter. It seems brighter. I have trouble getting it to write sometimes, but once I once it does write, then it's, it's good, I like it. You know, it's very bright, very, very bright. I need to order some new Jelly Rolls just to have them. I just need to need to do that. <clears throat> I'm just gonna add some white pen to this. So if you guys have any other questions or whatever, just let me know. But I think I'll just I'll just try to add some highlights and try to make everything look a little more dynamic. I guess you know we'll just. Try to give something, give it a third value, a little more complex, um, for the most part, maybe, just for a few minutes here. I don't know. What do you guys think? Try to keep it. I'll try to keep it. Keep it loose. It looks it looks cooler when you have that third value in there. Definitely adds something to it, you know. Definitely makes it look a little more just interesting, you know. It, it just gives it a little more something, even if I just kind of <laughs> sketch it in there. More of sketchy quality, sketchy look. I really like this section over here. The lips are pretty nice too. The way I started out. You know, I started out pretty loose and then I started focusing on like straight lines and really blocking, you know, focus on the simple, simple form, simple forms. Yeah, see, sometimes the uniball doesn't write, but kind of just have to clean the tip off a bit and... trying to figure out how this how these pins work but you know I still got two other ones so it's a little too much there well I hope I hope, I hope this video was helpful though today I hope the stream was helpful I mean I don't really have like I said I'm not an expert on this kind of stuff I'm just learning myself so 
I try to explain some things that I know for sure, but you know, I don't know everything. I'm not like an expert in drawing portraits or whatever, but I just do my best and I'm just showing you guys, hey man, I'm just practicing too and this is how I do it. This is one way to practice and and do the do the thing. Other than life, are there books you highly recommend for these lessons? You know, somebody asked me that earlier today and I I um on like YouTube somewhere, like on a comment and uh I don't really know. I don't really know any good drawing books that like that one one drawing book I really like for portraits actually. Uh, I can't remember the name. <laughs> it's like um Yeah, I may have I may have that book I may have a book in the description. It's a classical classical ah, uh, it was some Asian guy that uh I found this book on Amazon. I got the Kindle version. It was really good for portraits. Um, you know, he talks about using straight lines and it's like master, master, uh, classical drawing for mastering portraits or something like that. I wish, I wish, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to mention that tomorrow. I'm gonna look it up tonight. I'll mention that on the stream tomorrow because I'm doing more portraits tomorrow, painting a portrait, watercolor. Um, a study, not like, like nothing too crazy, but, um, yeah, it's like mass, something with master and something with classical drawing. I really, I'm sorry. I can't, I can't exactly figure it out. I don't remember the guy's name. It's been a while since I've looked, it's been a few years since I've looked at it, but I know that book was very helpful for me when I was like painting those really classical portraits and just drawing them and and uh, learning that kind of stuff. But uh, it's a really great book, really great book. But other than that, you know, I, I don't know a whole lot, to be honest, uh, you know, when it comes to this kind of, I don't really read a lot of drawing books or anything. It's just not, not what I do. I did as a kid, you know, I had a bunch of different kinds of drawing books and I had like those cool books where it's like how to draw 50 animals, how to draw 50 cars or whatever, you know, I had like all those kinds of books and I would just copy everything in them. This looks pretty cool, except for this crazy eyeball, that looks stupid, but... Hey, what you gonna do? I was trying to demonstrate a concept, but um, lessons in classical drawing. Uh, yeah, that might. Yeah, that. Uh, no, no, no. That's not it. That's not it. No, lessons in classical drawing. That's not it. It it specifically says for portraits, I believe. Um, and it has like, I think it's like tan and red on the cover. It's like master, masterful lessons in classical drawing or classical drawing to master portraits or something. I got, I'll look it up. I'll look it up. Cause that was a really great, really good book. If you really want to learn to draw portraits for real, for real, for real and capture the essence of people. I mean, it's something I need to study more and do more of. Um, even though I, I like landscapes more, you know, but sometimes I get into a portrait mode where I'll just start studying port, like I'm doing now, kind of in portrait mode a little bit. So since I'm here, I might as well take advantage of it and try to just study as much as I can. Share it with you guys, because Everybody's always asked me about, can you draw portraits, do a video on how to draw portraits and blah, 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 blah. Most of the time I don't really feel like it to be honest, but um, you really like the eye on the left, this one? This one's perfect, that's the best one. 
Yeah, really, if I delete that thing, I mean, the rest of the page is really good. I don't really know how to fix that. I don't know what to do. You know what I mean? I could try to, let's see if we can use some white to fix it, to be honest. Try to fix the shape a little bit. Uh, let's see, it's supposed to be up over here. Maybe down here. Kind of fix the shape. Yeah, this would be... I don't think this is helping it, but hey, you never know. Never know until you try. Right? Never know until you try. Let's see, what are these other eyes like? So they have like a dark line here. I don't know. Did I improve it? Yeah, a little bit, maybe. Uh, maybe it needs to be darker here. Just because since I actually drew in the iris and the pupil and everything. You know, still not like super realistic or anything, but... Hello, buddy. What you doing? Just trying to improve the page a little bit. Um, oh, that would have been a cool idea, Kuwait Islami. Hide it with pure black and draw on it with your white pen. Yeah, I th I th it crossed my mind to like make it pure black, but then I didn't want to like I didn't want to have a big black stain on the page. You know, didn't really want that. But I can shake this bottom lid a little bit more. I'm kind of referring to this one here, this like mannequin eye. So I'm just trying to get more curve to that. See, the white pen doesn't really draw on top of the black that well, as well. If it was like pure black. But, hey. Not too bad. Not too bad, I guess. Still looks pretty bizarre, but it's hard to fix pen and ink, you know? You just keep putting more and more down, hoping it's gonna get better, but it doesn't ever really get better, you know? <laughs> One of those things. There we go. Make it a little more curvy. A little curvy there. Anyway. Hour and 30 minutes. Anyway, um, I don't know. What do you guys think of the page? Looks pretty cool. Not bad. Some good studies today. We got some, I think we had some good, uh, you know, there were some good things happening here and, and some practice. And uh, But anyway, you guys can find there is a, um, there's a 3D version of this online that you can rotate, spin, you can change the lighting. I linked it on my, uh, I linked it in the, in the comments section, like two live streams ago, like drawing portrait study or whatever. I'll probably link it in this one as well, but, uh, 
Yeah, there's 3D versions of that thing online, so you can use the reference. Um, and other people have had taken photos of it and put out there for references. So, you know, you don't have to buy this thing or have this thing. You can always just take photos of your own face, too. You know, get a lamp, light it up, and... Um, yeah. So, you know, there's always... Um, there's always ways to do things, you know, especially most people have cell phones today for the most part. So like, it's very easy to take a photo of yourself and then just use that as a reference, you know. If you have good light outside, which I don't really right now with all the smoke, although I guess that would be the best kind of lighting. But, you know, if you want like some harsh light, really good shadows and stuff, I mean, go outside, take some... Uh, Take some photos of yourself and uh, at different angles, different turn your head, different ways, and, and start drawing it, you know, and start breaking it down real simply like this, with the straight lines, and use that that photos of this planes of the head thing. Use the photos of that online to reference, you know, planes of the cheeks and where things turn and all that stuff. But anyway, guys, be sure to check out my website, shaverfineart.com. Got some drawings for sale on there. Got some paintings for sale. So definitely check that out. Um, also got a support page and a blog, all kinds of stuff on there. Um, music that I make in my own time, you can check that out. Purchase a few tracks or whatever for a dollar. Help me out. But uh, anyway, support me on Patreon, stuff like that. Definitely be sure to check it out. I appreciate it. But um, <laughs> yeah, exactly, Philip. Remember going outside? That was nice. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I went outside today um, to ship out ship out some paintings. But that was about it. Although we have some good air quality today, man. It's actually a lot better today. We're in the moderate zone, almost to the good zone. So hopefully that'll last. But I'm not. I don't know. Anyway, guys, uh, I'm gonna get off here because I'm about to starve and. My stomach is about to eat the rest of my body so I gotta get out of here anyway see you guys on the next one thanks for watching peace